four-year-old, no, my six-year-old to eat cauliflower. So my six-year-old is the one that is quite happily eating everything. She's always been the kid that tries stuff. And I've got like a my little visual aid, my crocheted cauliflower to give you to I'm going to act out exactly how I did it because people will always ask me like oh does does your kid eat everything I have two very different children two very different eaters the first one um, pretty much did always eat everything but she's the one that I'm talking about today that recently decided she doesn't eat cauliflower which was something that roasted she used to love it so um, we're, we're all just navigating this together All right, so here's what I did. We were sitting down, we were eating. I'm trying to remember what else we had. There were also Brussels sprouts, which is something that she loved as a two-year-old, but she ate quite a lot of them all in in one sitting, and then she threw up that night. And has since then, she has tried them multiple times, but she's never actually, like, eaten them. All right, so we're just going to focus on the cauliflower. We were at dinner. We had um, we had some like baked fish, like the battered fish that you buy frozen that you fr- that you cook up in the oven because you know I can't. I'm just a normal parent as well. So we had that. Um, we had the the two different kinds of veggies and ketchup for dipping. I'm trying to think. I, I I think I might be missing something, but that was the crux of what we were eating. And I knew exactly what to expect from this dinner. I knew what she was willing to eat and what she wasn't, and I had let her know. Um, how many pieces of fish there were so I could set her up for success so that she didn't think she could just eat 10 pieces of fish because we didn't even have 10 pieces of fish. So that was all good. And then when we all sat down at the table, I had the roasted veggies in two different spots. Um, I I sit in the middle of both my kids. So um, I had some veggies in front of me and Miss Six-Year-Old and uh, another set in front of me and the other child. And I had offered, you know, would you like to serve yourself? Would you like me to serve you? And I let them decide if they want to serve themselves or if they would like me to serve them. I allow them to have that choice. Then then I sat down and I started serving myself from each of them. I said, I'm going to take a couple of, of, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts from yours and a couple of the cauliflowers from yours. And what I know is that I have had success before with putting, if I get like a, I usually cut the cauliflower into like, steak pieces because it's just easier uh so they they come out quite large and I know that when I make them into smaller pieces like smaller florets uh certain children are more likely to try them because they're small and less overwhelming I always suggest to put small amounts on the plate so that it's not overwhelming and so I said out loud oh I'm gonna just cut some of these up into smaller pieces um, just in case you know you decide you do want to try some and I let them know it's okay for them to take stuff off my plate there are times where they do take stuff off my plate and I'll say excuse me did you ask for that um because th- like this is just general learning of manners and, and understanding what's okay and what's not okay <clears throat> so I very much said I'm just going to cut some of these up and leave them on the side of my plate right here just you know just in case and I cut some up and I put them also back into the serving container in case somebody wanted to take them from there as well. And I had said that out loud. I had planted a seed for her and I had said that. And then as we're going on, we're eating. Um, I made explicit mention that I was going to turn and talk to this child, uh, leaving the six-year-old who does not like cauliflower, uh, leaving her there to explore my plate without me looking at her. And I had let her know, okay, I'm just going to talk to your sister for a second. And then I engaged in a conversation with her and I was looking at her and I spent like 10 seconds, 20 seconds having this conversation, like locked, our eyes were locked. I was not looking at what she was doing. And then I come back to the te- and then I come back to my seat and I I say, oh, I think some of my broccoli's gone. Walk about. What happened to it? And I look over and she. I wanted to see how she was playing along because sometimes she'll play in a different way. That day she decided. She said, oh, sometimes she will say it was me. She said, oh, I think we have a thief. I think we have a thief in the house. And I said, I think we do too. And I said. <clears throat> I wonder if this thief will come back if I turn and talk to her again. Uh, And so I cut up some more pieces and I kind of said, do you think this piece is too big for the thief or do you think the thief wouldn't mind a slightly bigger piece? So by doing that, she knows, she knows I know, I know, she knows I know. Um, But I had asked her, do you think that this piece is too big or should I cut it smaller? Because she's going to tell me how she would like her piece cut basically without telling me. And so this was great. She answered it and, and I, uh, we did that. And I said, oh, okay, well, let's give this an, ex- let's give this a try. I turn around, I talk to, I talk to her, I turn around really quickly. So I'm making this into something that's a little bit funny, a little bit silly, a little bit of a, a little bit of a game. Oh, oh, it's all still there. The thief hasn't been that quick. 
And I turn around, I, I continue the talking. I'm also eating my food because I'm hungry and it's fish and I'm eating it as well. And I turn around, you know, I'm having a conversation. I turn around and we just keep doing this throughout dinner. And there's a point where I, I, I like, I haven't finished my meal at, you know, 10, 15 minutes and I'm kind of done. And she's asking me, oh, you know, uh, I think the thief's coming back. Or she'll say, like, I'm just going to put my hands here to make sure, like, on the side of the plate. Like, I'm just going to put my hands here to make sure the thief can't come. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So I'm sort of playing along and seeing where she's going with this. And so what I'm trying to get across here is it doesn't have to be anything that's, uh, like, there's nothing magical about this. Uh, these are the same kinds of methods that, that, like, I use with my own kids that I teach other, I teach clients. And I was just on a discovery call uh, today, and I was on another one. I've been on quite a few, actually, the last couple of days. Um, and one mom who has four children was telling me that she feels like meal times are just so stressful for her because she feels like she has to solve the problems for all her kids. Like, one kid doesn't want the cauliflower on a, on the plate, and the other one doesn't want this on the plate. So she's constantly like having to like put out these little fires. And when we were talking about what it would be like for us to work together, a large part of what I do with clients, either with one-on-ones or when we work it together in the group, is <clears throat> I get to know your situation and I get to know your children. And well, I get to know them through you. They're not on the call. I get to know them through you. What what things motivate them? What things drive them? How can I help you have those sorts of conversations? What I just described with the cauliflower probably wouldn't work for a lot of other children. I know my kid and I know my client's kids and I know which strategies are going to help them the best. And so when we work together, I'm able to give you tools and strategies as well. And so this mom that I was on the discovery call with who feels like she's putting out fires constantly, she has four children. And I've worked with bigger families before um, with kids, that, uh, with parents that have three, four, five or more children. And there's a lot of like, yes, it's hard. It's harder. It's complicated. We're working on multiple different children with multiple different preferences. So in that respect, it is more difficult. And for that, I recommend one on one coaching, not group. And so this mom signed up to work with me. And when I was talking to her on the call, I said, you know, <clears throat> having the additional children is hard. However, there are a lot of really useful ways that we can work with them and make it much more engaging and <clears throat> one of the things that I do that is very important to me in my practice is prioritizing relationships in the family not just your relationship with your child obviously that is paramount but also if we're working with with if I'm working with clients most most of my clients have more than one child um, we're working on co uh, communication between the children this is something that's very important to me as a practitioner and a parent uh, to help the children develop ways that they're able to speak with each other, hold conversations with each other, and just learn to interact with each other. So what, something that one of my clients actually said to me a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about food throwing and how that was also impacting their lives because the child was having multiple meltdowns with other things in life, like getting dressed and putting on shoes and stuff. Um, so we, we, we were talking about those situations as well. And she kind of said to me, she says, I'm working with you to help my kids with the food, but you're kind of also like a parenting coach. Because and, and I replied to her, well, yeah, because the the boundaries and the communication techniques that we use when we're working on mealtimes are very much applicable to other areas of life as well um, with a child. And, you know, obviously I'm a parent as well. So th this is something that I'm very familiar with. And when we're, when we're working together when it comes to food, this really does translate very nicely to other areas of parenting because Lots of things can become battles. Getting dressed can become a battle. Putting shoes on can become a battle. Wiping your bum can become a battle. Brushing your teeth can become a battle. So by uh, using the techniques that we talk about and that, that you that we work through in terms of food and setting boundaries and you know managing meltdowns is very applicable to other areas of life as well. And so that's the story that I wanted to share today. Um, let me see what the time is. I've got I've got a couple of minutes before I've got to jump onto my next call, which I'm just gonna get it I've got like two minutes so um if you have a question and you're here live awesome send it over and um I'll answer it for you this will be uh I'm, this is live on YouTube so it's going to be uh recorded if you're not already on my email list you can go to the links in my bio and sign up for my free mealtime respectful phrase guide and you will also receive emails um, but I'm also going to save this on, um, on Instagram as well. Oh, thank you for sharing the live, by the way. Can I make sure my kids aren't picky? 
Well, some children are naturally more picky than others or more selective. That's, that's, that's Part of that is normal. However, what you can do to set up the best dynamics between you and your child from the very beginning is responsive feeding, which is what I teach in my online courses. I've got, depending how old, how old is your child, Rory, um, I've got three different courses. Two of them are mealtime related. One is for babies, zero to 12 months old which if your kid is in that age group, go and get that course. It's called Fuss Free First Foods. It helps you set up responsive feeding right from the beginning, helps you set up schedule right from the beginning, uh, helps you navigate solids right from the beginning, whether you do purees or uh, baby led weaning or a combination. It's not about making you pick one. It's about picking the one that's right for you. Um, when I work with clients and, and we do things like this, it's, um, it's all about what's right for you and not about picking one way over another way. Um, and I've also got my meal times without meltdowns course, which is my bestseller. It's for kids 12 months and older. I've had, ki- I've had parents with kids that are 10 years old, take the course and, and have good success with it. Um, so if you're just getting started, that's probably the best place to start. <clears throat> Putting snacks in backpack after school care. So frustrating. He wants to do after school care karate. I'm not sure I understand the, the problem. but will not want to because he's hungry. Uh, So he's not eating the snacks. So if your child is um, already a very selective eater, part of the problem with sending them to school with things that are not reliable for them is that they haven't had a chance to be successful at home first. So I always recommend uh, practicing those foods at home before sending them to school. Yeah, so practice, practice them at home. Um, and like I said, from the very beginning, uh, with, you know, getting kids into the kitchen and and helping you prepare, there are so many ways that you can engage your child in that, in that way. Um, exposures start well before you get to the table, (laughs) well before you get to the table. I'm often on a discovery call with, with a a parent and uh, like today, actually, somebody asked me, what's my success rate? And I said, well, I don't necessarily have a success rate in the sense that like, I can tell you 95% of kids, like, because define success, that's the problem. Like, that's really the thing. What's successful to you might not be successful to me. Um, what's successful to me is that a parent leaves after working with me and they have all the tools that they need and the confidence they need to uh, help cultivate a positive relationship with food, a positive relationship between the parent and the child, communicate effectively, manage, manage boundaries and food related meltdowns in a respectful way and set up respectful meals that the child is going to be stretched but also successful with so those are those are some of my goal posts I suppose for success and but a parent's success might be I want my child eating Brussels sprouts (laughs) I can't guarantee that and um, I will always be I'm very upfront about this because if anybody is promising you oh yeah six weeks and I'll have your kid eating Brussels sprouts it's bullshit you can't you can't you just can't promise that and like I will tell parents at the end of our eight-week program like the the small coaching group that I have I will say this in the first week and I'll call that is not the goal that is not what success is that is not the goal you can make your child eat Brussels sprouts today by bribing them or taking away their tablet or whatever but that's not the that's not the actual goal you want you want your child to want to eat the Brussels sprouts and in order to cultivate that you have to put in not just you like it's a process. <laughs> There's time and effort that needs to go into this. And the parents that work with me know that. And I want to be very upfront about that because this is an ongoing thing. I actually said something that I've said a number of times on here, but I wanted to say it again because I said it today in my call. Um, I said, look, you can take a course on how to manage meltdowns with your child. That doesn't mean that your child is never going to have another meltdown. What that means is you're going to be equipped with the tools to handle a meltdown in a respectful way that you want to be the kind of parent that you want to be during a meltdown to handle it and help your child in the best possible way. Those are the tools that you're going to walk away with. That's that's ultimately what you need, not that your child's never going to have another meltdown because that's ridiculous and impossible. So keeping things in perspective and what success is, is, is really essential when we're talking about this. And I want, I'm very upfront because I can't, no one can promise that they're going to have your child eating certain things on a certain schedule. It doesn't, just doesn't work that way. (laughs) 
Um, Meadow, yeah, I do. You can also send me a DM if you want to chat with me. You can now do that on TikTok um, or you can do it on Instagram. The website is the link in my bio. Um, you can also go ahead and book a call with me. I'm actually, the last week or so, um, I, I've signed like three new clients and my wait list for one-on-one -on -one is now until, it's full until March. So if you're, if in your case, that seems like quite uh, extreme, we probably would need to talk about one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're wanting to work with me um, and you don't have a super extreme case, uh, send me a message, we can chat about it, but book a discovery call and it sounds like the group would probably be the most, the, the best fit. It's also the most affordable and it starts in January. Uh, there's um, three spots already taken. So if you want to get in, um, go put down, it's a deposit and you get access to those online courses that I was telling you about now to start working through. And then we start the group calls start in January. Nicole, setting your baby up to be successful when you start introducing solids, please check out my Fuss Free First Foods course, FFFF, Fuss Free First Foods. If you go to the link in my bio and you tap on the little menu, the top right-hand side with the three lines, you'll see courses by Talia and you'll see Fuss Free First Foods. That, will, that covers everything that you need in the first year to set up feeding dynamics successfully um, including when to start a schedule how to like what how, what solids how to give them safely of course um, whether you do baby led weaning or if you do purees or a combination of both the course is not geared towards only one or the other it's a practical course for parents who may want to do baby led weaning or who might want to do a combination of both or who might want to do purees but it's all about how to set up I actually created that course maybe um, within a year of when I started coaching clients because parents on the phone would say, oh gosh, I really wish I had known all these things when my child was a baby. So I created the course for that reason. Personally, I don't like Brussels sprouts because they have a really bad taste. Can I tell you, <laughs> I want to actually share a quick story. I need to just open this link um, for my clients because um, everyone said they were running a little bit late this week, which is great. It's great because I can stay on, I can stay on the live for a little bit, but as soon as they join, I've got to go. Um, what I was going to say was, I, there's a vegetable that I really dislike. <laughs> it is absolutely not my favorite. I do not enjoy eating it. I have tried it a number of times and every time I get an opportunity to try it, I will try it. That's beetroot. <laughs> I do not enjoy the taste of beetroot. I think it is quite has a dirt taste to me. You don't have to like everything. Your child doesn't have to like everything. That's not feasible. It's not reality. It's not, that's not our goal. But our goal is to be open and try things. Another vegetable that I've been learning to like, I'm just going to share this with you because it's, you might find it interesting to know that I do talk about these things with my children as well. Um, I'm really not a big fan of capsicum or um, uh, bell peppers, but I've found that the orange ones although they're expensive, they're, they're much sweeter and um, I can actually, I, I'm starting to like them. And so that's been something I've been talking about with my kids. All right, I do have to go now because I've got my client in the waiting room. Um, <clears throat> if you would like to chat with me, send me a DM. You can now do that on TikTok. You can do it on Instagram. Um, if you're interested in coaching in the group, if you already know, like you've heard everything I've had to say, you can go check out the link. Um, the link is in my bio, tap on small coaching group. Um, you can save your place today and get started. There are already three spots are taken and it starts next month. Um, if you're not sure if the group is right for you, send me a DM, tell me a bit about your situation and I'll let you know which one um, is probably the best fit for you. And I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.